Hello and welcome to this section of the Calculus 1 Extra Practice with Derivatives Tutor. And in this case we're going to finally start looking at our first class of problem that's really the most important class of problem that you can learn how to integrate. And honestly it's one of the easiest also. And that's going to be learning how to integrate polynomials. And then when you think about it, polynomials are everywhere. You know, x squared plus 2x minus 4. Things like that. Those are everywhere. They can be used to represent all kinds of really important everyday things. So learning how to integrate polynomials is super important, but more importantly, is super easy. So let me go ahead and show you the rule. Uh, and we're not going to derive the rule, by the way. Uh, that's, you know, for kind of a, another class or for a deeper exploration of what's going on. I'm going to teach you how it works. I'm going to teach you how to do the problems. I'm going to teach you the gotchas to make sure that you don't make silly mistakes to get the wrong answer. But I'm not going to derive why all of these techniques work because it's way beyond the scope of a Calculus 1 course. There's a lot behind. I mean, hundreds of years of development into why these things work. Uh, so here is the rule to uh, integrate polynomials. So here's the rule to integrate a polynomial. If you're integrating a constant times x to the n power, over dx. And what I mean by this is uh, this is x to a number, which is a power, and this is a constant. So this could be 5x squared, or this could be 5x cubed, or this could be negative 3x to the fifth power, or something like this. Then the way you do the integration is as follows. You say you take the constant, which can come out of the integral, you take the constant and divide by n plus 1. And then you take x and you raise it to the power of m plus 1, and that is the answer. And don't forget, because we have an indefinite integral, we have a constant of integration off on the end here, which is a, a different constant than what's in here. In fact, just to make it clear, let me, let me kind of get rid of that for now. We'll talk about the constant of integration when we do actual problems. So all you do in this case is you take the number that's outside, you divide it by 1 plus the exponent, and then you take x and you raise it again to 1 plus the exponent. It looks a little bit crazy when you write it down, you know, like this, a little complicated. But in fact, when you solve a problem, it's very, very, very simple. So let's do a problem. Let's say you have the integral of x squared dx. So all you do, notice the what is in front of here is just a 1. So all you do is you say 1 over the exponent plus 1, so you can write it as 2 plus 1 to remind yourself what you're doing. And then you take x and you raise it again to the 2 plus 1 power. And because this is an indefinite integral, we always have to add an arbitrary constant of integration. So what you're going to have is 1 third x to the 3 power plus a constant. This is the answer. That is the integral. That is the antiderivative of this indefinite integral. And to make sure that you understand that it works, you should take the answer and take the derivative and see if you get back what you started with. If you take the derivative of this, the derivative of a constant zero, so it goes away, the derivative of this is going to be one-third times 3x squared. So the one-third and the three are going to go away, and you're going to be left with x squared, which is exactly what you started with. So again, you take whatever's in front, and then divide it by 1 plus the exponent, and then you raise x to 1 plus the exponent. And once you get the hang of this, uh, because it just involves simple addition of exponents like this, it's very, very simple and very easy to remember. So what if you have the integral 2x minus 7, like this? How do you do that? Notice, and this is dx, of course, notice that we have really two functions summed together, really, even though there's a minus sign. The first function's 2x, and the second function's negative 7, and they're summed together. Now we said, just like derivatives, when you have things added together inside